official and final resume uh, next week during when you're going to upload uh, it to the portal. So the one you submitted to me, um, I tell one student never submit um, a terrible resume. Granted, even though I probably won't look at it, make sure you're always submitting a resume that you're proud of. Um, but next week, make sure that resume is in amazing condition. Yes. Um, can if people are like confused whether they completed completed the interest form or not because they didn't get a confirmation, mm -hmm. should they go ahead and complete it again? Um, no. So, uh, uh, so I want to say for the first maybe four or five hundred students, you didn't get a confirmation email. Um, and what and what prompted me to go add that confirmation email was um, students were reaching out like, hey, I'm not sure if I submitted it correctly or not. I'm not sure if it actually went through. So I went I went ahead and I added a confirmation. So honestly, for maybe like the first five or six hundred students that submitted their um, their interest form, none of them got confirmation emails. Um, I added it literally for the rest, for the other 800 that actually submitted it. So don't worry about that. Um, let me know if you all don't get a welcome email next Tuesday. That's mm -hmm. gonna say if you actually submitted the form or not. If you don't, then just shoot me a, um, a DM and I can just add you to the portal that way. Can they email VCF at CodePath if they want someone to confirm before then? Um, well, if you email VCF at CodePath, you're only talking to me. <laughs> so I didn't know if you had like a team, Anthony. I was like, there have to be other people helping you out, right? Um, um, what, what, try to wait till you, it? if you get the welcome email or not. Um, yeah, so right now it's just me. So if you all ever get an email from VCF at CodePath, it's me. If you get an email on Slack, it's um, me. a message on Slack, it's me. <laughs> Um, <laughs> now doing the actual fair those three days, we're going to have ops is going to be helping us out and things like that. So it won't just be me, but up until September 14th, don't matter what email you email, it's going to be me responding. So if I respond and I don't say hello, it's me. I'm sorry. There's, there's <laughs> only one Anthony. Um, <laughs> um, thank you for answering all those questions though. And for being here with us today. Absolutely. So an example, I might use MathWorks as a company as an example today, if I'm talking about like tailoring your resume, because I just saw them and I know they're coming to VCF. So like, for example, I know MathWorks will sponsor for graduate level positions, but they will not sponsor for undergrad. And I clarified that with them. So when those companies come to VCF and post the positions with us, they're clarifying that on the back end. And we have all of the matching that we do based on the information that you give us. So like we're taking many, many factors into consideration. Um, you're not required to submit the VCF interest form again, um, but it will be open up on Monday. Um, you'll be able to update your resume and that's why we're having this resume session today after a lot of you have submitted your resume already. However, VCF is not your only, it is not like this is the only recruiting opportunity I'm doing ever. And if I don't get something from VCF, it's like over for me. No, um, this, oh, it doesn't accept Python. That's really annoying. Um, so some people like math lab, um, Tahamid, <laughs> some people like math too. Um, but what I will say is this session that we're going to go through today should be helpful for you no matter what you're submitting your resume for. Um, I'm going to keep VCF in mind because that's what we want you all to be really prepared for, but we're talking about casting a wide net with your resume. We're talking about submitting your resume to a portal or not directly to a company yet. Some of these companies may say, hey, we really liked meeting you. Let's have this 15 minute conversation. From there, we'll send you a special link, right? Um, to apply again. So you might have another opportunity to update your resume. I don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen. So that's why we want the resume to be broad, um, like obviously a technical resume because these are technical positions, right? Um, we want it to include as many details as possible. Um, for a variety of positions, but you may have an opportunity to submit an updated one later. But this is like, I guess I'm gonna call this like career fair resumes. I'm gonna get to adding code path to your resume. That was another thing that MathWorks said they wanted to see um, because 
MathWorks partners, CodePath is one of the nonprofits that MathWorks specifically partners with. Um, they go around, like when I was at this event, they had all of these universities that they recruit from, right? I was not from a university, I was from CodePath. So they were like, we go to like these were the universities that were there. UMass, Wellesley, MIT, like Boston U, whatever, and CodePath, because CodePath is another place that they come. Um, and we're still like, I think we're still getting companies um, for the fair. We're trying to get as many for you all. And that's probably why we haven't released any information on them yet. Um, anyway, let's jump in to um, keep your questions in the chat. I'll try to get to as many of them possible after. I'm not going to be looking at the chat too much while I'm going through the presentation. And I am recording. So let me scooch this window to the side, share my screen. Um, we are going through something that hopefully most of you have seen today, which is the resume checklist. Um, let me pull my chat and things to the side. Um, if you haven't seen the resume checklist, um, you all know where it is. So someone, I can drop it in the chat. Um, super helpful and a lot of words, but I wrote the words. Um, so I promise if you if you read the words, it will be helpful. Um, I, I try to only write helpful words. Um, so let's go through this. So a resume is a, is a marketing tool. Um, it is, I like to think about a resume as like, I don't know why I like to think about it like this, but like, <laughs> this is gonna sound like such a weird metaphor. If you've heard it before, it probably sounded weird before too. But if you're like a cereal box on a shelf and like the front of the cereal box is the resume, it's like, what is going to make someone like pick you off the shelf? which you're not a box of cereal. Um, I'm not trying to make you food or whatever, but it's like if someone sees a snapshot of your experience or a movie trailer, a movie trailer might be a better um, metaphor. What is going to make someone want to watch the full movie or like watch a little bit of the movie, watch part one of the movie, bring you in for an interview, basically. Um, you're going to be matched with some of these, with these companies at VCF, right? But so then they will have your resume once you've matched with them. But what is going to make them like want to progress you through next steps? You're not going to have a lot of time with them. What if you're in a group interview with this company or a group session? What is going to make you stand out? So in your resume, we want to kind of check as many boxes as we can from what these companies are looking for. Um, so check the boxes. If everyone is checking the same boxes, all the resumes are the same, right? Um, but we wanna make sure that you check the boxes and then that we also highlight what makes you unique or different from everyone else that this company has seen. And that is not to make it feel like a competition between um, you all or a competition, but it, but it is a competition between you and all of the other resumes, right? Your resume is gonna be in competition with other people until you can get in front of these companies when it's you. Um, and that is the same for your school's career fairs. It's the same for any future networking event. You owe it to yourself to, to quickly show the company what you have to offer to check their boxes and also to offer like what is different about you. Why should they pick if all the cereal boxes on the shelf are the same, like why should they pick your box of cereal? Um, so, okay, going down, this is also, I see some questions about like, can I have a font size 11 or a font size 10 if you say 11? This is like, consider this a guideline for like, or like a recipe if you want a solid, just like, um, crowd pleaser as much as possible resume. I was working with a student the other day who said that they emailed a recruiter and were messaging a recruiter who reached out to them. And that recruiter was like, oh, I don't like bullet points. Like I prefer paragraphs of text and not bullet points. And I was like, okay, well, you can 
update your resume for that recruiter, send them the paragraphs of text because that's what they want. But if we're trying to please as many people as possible, for most people, bullet points are easier to read, convey your value and skills more quickly. Um, and that's what we're going to do for most people. But if you have opinions, if you have like a unique circumstance, these are not rules. I don't want you to, to say like, oh, I, I have to do it this way. This is again, a recipe for a good resume. It is supposed to make it easier for you, but you can go off book. You can improvise. You can, it's your resume and it's supposed to be conveying who you are. Um, so, but if you want the easiest way, like, honestly, if I were like, I just don't want to deal with creating a resume, we're trying to wonder if it's um, good or not. I, sorry, I would probably just follow these instructions. Um, okay, going I, I also am a visual person, so I love a, an easy, um, but also I love to see what this might look like. Um, going down, you can also create copies of these documents, put your information in here. Um, this is going to be the kind of format or um, structure for most people. And I'm gonna move these bullet points over to the side because I need to fix things when I see them. Um, we want to show relevant coursework for a lot of positions, especially if you're going for an internship, because some of these internships may say, oh, we need someone who has had data structures and algorithms. We need someone who has taken some solid computer science coursework, um, and they want to feel confident in your ability there. Um, so you do want to put relevant coursework, but you don't need to list like every course you've taken, like intro to computer science or stuff like that. That is pretty... Um, that they can assume that you've taken. You don't wanna include high school stuff after your sophomore year. Um, so if it is something really notable, like I don't know if you won a, like a national spelling bee or you received some national award or I don't, I don't know, won the high school state championship and were the captain of the team, something like that. You can include that because that's cool. Um, Let's see, our bullet points are really the opportunity to showcase your skills. So I, I didn't write bullet points here, but I did link an article at the bottom um, that has some really awesome bullet points. So this article at the bottom is one of my, it's not my favorite resume in the world, but um, it has really strong project bullet points. And it also has a list of verbs in this article too. So I really like this article specifically for the project bullet points. Um, words like developed, created, designed, integrated, incorporated are going to um, show that you had technical, like show your technical experience, even if someone is just skimming those bullet points. And we have some of those words here too. Um, and show, showing um, results as much as possible. So results are most easily shown through numbers, but not everyone is going to have numbers, right? So if you don't have a number, you can say words like improved, improved performance of, um, accelerated, like grew a team or um, increased, decreased. Words like that show some sort of outcome or result without having a specific number to back them up. But sometimes numbers are just, helpful. Like if you taught a class, if you like, if you were the person who brought code path to your campus and you grew your code path student club course, whatever, from one student yourself or two students that were interested to like 20 students, which has served like over 50 students over the course of two semesters. That is impressive. The fact that you brought that many students together. So you might think that's not that big of a deal because it's not related to tech. But to me, it shows someone who is influential, someone who is a leader. Um, and those numbers really help just them to visualize what you were doing. Um, so you might not have, you might not have any technical experience. And so you might just want to include projects, but I would encourage you to show some sort of work experience, even if um, your only work experience was like, let's say you worked your, you 
you've only worked at a restaurant um, throughout high school and going into college. Um, and you moved up from like just a waiter or a host to um, like a manager or a shift manager or whatever at a restaurant. And you don't want to include that because, oh, it's not technical. But working in a restaurant is like one, one of the hardest jobs ever. Two, it shows that you have worked there for a long time and you've like moved up positions. You don't have to take up a ton of space to do it. You could have two bullet points and one of those bullet points is like promoted from host to lead waiter. I don't know. Um, as one of those bullet points, don't have to take up a ton of space. Or, and I, another example is you could have it written as one line like this, um, showing additional experience and like another section with relevant experience, but not showing any work experience is always a red flag for me because I don't want to be, if I'm hiring someone, I don't want to be the person who has to teach you how to work at a job or teach you how to show up or teach you how to communicate, you know? Um, so showing that you've had some work experience prior is always preferable, even if we don't take up a ton of space to do it. Um, if you don't have a ton of technical experience, I'm also a fan of including the, if you don't have any work, any experience at all projects, um, or showing that you've done a code path course, you know, so show what you can, um, Maybe a lot of you are doing this code path course along with an internship from the summer. And I think it's like some students will just list code path and their certifications here, like code path, advanced software engineering, whatever. Um, I really like also showing the dates here because so that would be like June 2022 to August 2022, right? Um, I love showing the dates there because the fact that you were doing code path over the summer along with your internship and like juggling those two things at once um, is impressive to me. So I like seeing that that time overlapped, thinking about the story that it tells. It might not feel like a lot to you, but think about like getting credit for all of the hard work that you've done and like not letting those things just go without earning you some credit, at least for like the hard work and things that you've accomplished. Um, I do like having skills close to the top, so I don't know why I also have it here. Um, sometimes I play around in these resources. Um, I like skills close to the top if you don't have a ton of technical experience, because we're going to get those technical keywords like really, really close to the top. If you are a career changer and you're really, really worried about your lack of technical experience, you can put some key qualifications at the top that summarize like a little bit of your past career and how it led you to your first career. For most students, um, for most code past students, I think this is gonna be the correct order, but I just did wanna give you all some options. Things that I love to see to make projects more of a, um, framed as more of an experience. I love a project title that stands out. So a lot of you, I will give you, I'll get to the code path options in a second, but I love a project title that is not like blank clone. Like all of the projects that I see are like Twitter clone um, or Instagram clone or a clone of this or movie database or to-do list. And I see those a lot, but I would at least like a cute or like interesting name. I know you can't like where I can still get that it's like a clone of something or understand what it is, but something that feels a little bit more like a side project or a personal project, even though it wasn't. Um, I know you may not have control over the name for like lots of things, but I would just love something that seems like you put a unique spin on it, which sometimes you all do put a unique spin on some of these. Um, and so just coming up with something that is like different or new and catches my eye. Also including the role. So like if you built the project by yourself, you can call yourself a full stack developer. If it was a mobile project, you can call yourself a mobile or Android developer or iOS developer. Um, it is a project section, so they'll know it was a project. But if you were a team lead, like call yourself a team lead and make sure you say how many people you worked on a team with. Companies do like to see that you have that team experience and then um, 
also like that you've built some stuff independently. I also love to see a link to something visual about this project. So whether that is linking to the GitHub repo or a demo, um, like a quick demo video, did you present at a demo day? Is that on YouTube? Can I see it? Like, I would much rather like click on something and see something more visual than like read a ton of resume words. Um, again, we're trying to optimize for like ATS and a human who eventually sees it, right? Um, or see like a readme or a blog about the project. But we still want to not just have a description of like, I built a to-do list um, <laughs> with these technologies. I wanna see a little bit more like, like what are the decisions that you made while building the to-do list that show me that you are an engineer and not just someone who like follows instructions. Like what decisions did you make? Is there anything that you did differently and why did you do it differently? Um, so thinking about the thinking about building out these bullet points, I didn't include a ton of them here, um, but you can include more. And finally, when we get to um, so everything like we hopefully we have a lot of technical experience up here, right? We may not have all technical experience, but hopefully we have a lot. Um, I want to ideally see that you've done something outside of building and work. Um, I love to see community involvement leadership awards aren't always my thing because like if it's an award that is related to gpa and you've already included your gpa up top i don't really need to see more that is like academically related um but i would love to see a leadership position i would love to see a volunteer position um even if you want to change this section to like just community involvement is another thing i normally call it um I don't like extracurricular activities. That sounds a little like high schooly to me. Um, but even if we just say that you're like a member of the Code Path community, like, um, or an alum, like you all are about to be alumni, right? So you could just say like, and this is outside of putting the course on your resume. But if you just wanted to show that like you're involved with the community. This is an option here. Um, like um, some of you are very involved in Slack and like very involved in helping other students, pointing other students in the right direction, you know? So um, like, I think you all are active. A lot of you all are active members of the CodePath community and you link to CodePath and you show like what CodePath is. And it's a way that you all have become more involved in tech um, and committed to the industry. My other favorite option is to, um, this is actually a student's, someone's um, interest because sometimes I come in here and I change them when I find like interesting ones. Um, but you could include skills and interests at the bottom. I personally love an interest section because it's just one line. And if the rest of your resume is like super technical, um, I love something that shows that you do, you do something outside of coding. Um, because while a lot of these companies are looking for, you know, strong coders, strong builders, they're going to see some of that in your coding challenge, right? Or the, they will see it in your projects. They also want to know that someone can take feedback, that they can communicate, that they're um, committed to things outside of, you know, working, which like if I were you, I would roll my eyes because I know that you all don't have a ton of time for this stuff. Um, but just like even something that feels not related, but is fun, like a student I met with yesterday who is really interested in, in filmmaking um, and graphic design, get credit, again, get credit for those things that you do that make you interesting and um, that showcase just another quick side of yourself. So here we are to the options for listing CodePath experience. Um, keep throwing your questions in the chat and I will take time for questions at the end and also to see resumes if I have the time for that. Um, okay. So you can include it in the education section like this. This is not my favorite way, but if you need more things to take up space on your resume, this is a good way to highlight it and to get credit for it and to have it stand out a little bit more. Um, you could also include it under relevant coursework. This is best if you don't have a ton of space and 
Um, if you have other things that you want to showcase more on your resume, in all of these cases, I normally recommend hyperlinking over CodePath to the CodePath website because I don't think the hyperlink ever hurts. Um, and sometimes CodePath, like CodePath is a fairly recognizable name, but sometimes people can wonder when they see it, oh, is that that nonprofit that we have heard a lot about? Um, or is that a like a local coding boot camp? Like they might not know and they're not going to go Google it, right? So if you include the link there, it's really easy for them to go get more information. This is one of my favorite ways of um, showcasing it in a skills and certification section, because I think it's like, ooh, what is this certification? And people get interested and it kind of stands out in a technical spot. Um, but again, I actually like putting the, like the whole dates that you did it here um, so that they can see you were doing it with your courses or whatever. Another option is relevant training. If you've taken a lot of like employer sponsored courses and you want some of those employer names on your resume, you could include it in a relevant training section. Um, if you were a tech fellow, a guru or like a founder of a course at your campus, or like you've done, you've kind of gone above and beyond done some code path, like volunteered for some code path student panels, written some blogs for us, stuff like that. Um, you could list it as either, well, tech fellow could be relevant experience, but you could also call it like leadership experience. Um, so there are lots of different options and pick the one that is best for you. But the key is that you do want it on your resume. Um, and you obviously want it in your LinkedIn as well, which you are linking to from your resume. I, in the announcements channel and actually like pinned in our um, summer channel, you should find tips for linking it on your LinkedIn, but that's fairly easy. Um, let me see if there's anything else. Um, if you really struggle with, definitely put your resume through Grammarly, but if you really struggle with coming up with bullet points and you have Microsoft Word, you can actually um, use Microsoft Word's resume assistant um, to help you come up with bullet points. Or I actually, personally, I just prefer going to other people's like LinkedIn's um, and looking at their bullet points and getting ideas from that. So let me check my questions in the chat. Okay. And um, hopefully I will have time for some resume feedback. Okay, lots of questions. I think I'm gonna go from the bottom and go back up because <laughs> I think that will be easiest for me. Um, Desmond, this, is it a must to have a LinkedIn page? For, unless you have a strong reason why you don't wanna have a LinkedIn page, the recording will be sent to you. If you have to run, that's fine. This is not mandatory. I'm not like taking attendance or anything. Um, I will post the recording in the Summer 22 channel. Um, and I will get to as many questions as I can with the and resumes with the time that we have left. Um, okay, I'm going to start with Desmond and go up, and then I'll come back down. Is it a must have a LinkedIn page? It is not, but it is kind of like it's kind of like when you can't Google someone. It like LinkedIn is unless you have strong strong feelings about like not having a LinkedIn. I would say that it is best to have one just because it's nice to have, it is almost like confirmation that like this person exists and they're not like a spam resume, they're like a real person and I can find them and it it feels consistent. Whenever you can ha establish consistency and credibility um, between your resume and LinkedIn, like I get your resume, I go to your LinkedIn, I see the same things on your LinkedIn. That kind of instantly makes you a more consistent, incredible person. Um, and I know from talking to the MathWorks recruiters, they were like, oh yeah, we look up everyone on LinkedIn. Um, if for me as a career coach, and if, if I were a hiring manager or hiring people, um, LinkedIn is just easier for me to go to. It's a more visual experience. So normally a resume is something that 
I'd have to collect um, or to have like ATS screening system read it. And then from there, it would filter up the resumes that I like need to look at or that met my requirements. Or I might look at every resume depending on how many people I get. But then LinkedIn is, is kind of like, where I go to like see more about that person and like did they include the same things on their LinkedIn or do they have nothing on their LinkedIn if they then have nothing on their LinkedIn that's a little bit of a red flag so I'm sure you all do kind of the same thing and I know we compare the job search to dating a lot but if you have a date with someone like like a blind date or whatever like I would probably google them right because I just want to know like who is this person <laughs> um Am I gonna like feel safe with them? Like that kind of stuff. Um, so it just establishes consistency. So yes, I would have a LinkedIn. Um, we also have a LinkedIn checklist. And um we have lots of um students, code past students on LinkedIn. I would check out their profiles because there are a lot of great ones up there. Okay. Okay. Utilized in project section. Yes, you can you can move these around. Um, honestly, my preferences on resumes like change all the time. Like, and it might change on my vibe or how much space I have, or if I had a new project that I really want to include for this specific manager. So none of this formatting is mandatory, but I do think it is for me right now, it looks like the cleanest and the best. And it is what I prefer to see. I also want you all to like your resume too. Um, you can use subheadings for skills, like um, tools, frameworks, languages, additional, whatever. Um, for skills, you can use subheadings, especially if you have a lot and you kind of want to group them. But if you, every time you have a subheading, it takes up a line of space. So a lot of these considerations are like a cost benefit analysis and prioritizing. You can put publications and projects in the same section, or you can um, call them out separately, especially if you're aiming for like more academic positions, like in data science, machine learning, like that area, you might want to call out the publications separately. Okay. Relevant training is just a, is just a consideration. And I would probably only use relevant training if I took a course that was not a project and I kind of wanted to get credit for it, like let's say you've done like um, an externship that is not really an internship. Um, so you don't want to put it under work experience, but it is a good name and you like learned a lot and it basically shows that you learned something and you want to have some bullet points underneath of it. I would put it under relevant training. Um, so I could expand upon it instead of just like one line under certifications. So a lot of these considerations are like, what do I want to expand upon and emphasize? And what do I want to minimize, but still have there to make sure I get credit for it? You can include links for other things on your resume, but only include links to the things that you want to them to click on and to show them. So like, if I, like interned for Gap and people know about Gap and there's nothing really I gain by them going to Gap's website and seeing it, I'd probably not link to that. But I would link to CodePath because I want them to know like, hey, it was this legit thing that I did and they have a really pretty legit website <laughs> is why I would link to it. Um, yeah, I right now I, I coach students to put the intermediate software engineering down, the intro to software engineering, and the advanced software engineering if we change our guidance. Um, obviously, technical interview prep does not sound as great, but I think, you know, the fact that you're doing like a three month long training over the summer, in addition to the other things, like you're trying to get better, you're trying to learn as much as you can. I think code paths mission, and that's why I like linking to code path too, um, is like our whole deal is that you don't really get this kind of training in your CS degrees. Like um, 
at least not everyone, you know? So the fact that you're seeking out this additional thing, you applied, you got accepted, you're here, you're doing it. Like I would want to get credit for that. So even if you do list it as technical interview prep, um, like what is so bad about doing technical interview prep? <laughs> like, obviously you're doing it. Um, I like seeing your face. Um, I'm looking at the face in your presentation questions right now. Um, it helps us feel, I would, anytime you can have someone like see you honestly and be reminded that you're a real human, not just applicant number like 427, you know, but like a person with a smile who is ready to work, who also did this demo and is like demoing it on YouTube and led this team or like a picture um, on my LinkedIn, which I like am a little embarrassed of. I actually put pictures of me like doing a presentation, which it's just like a still picture of me, but it shows like, oh, Kelsey really is who she says she is. Here she is doing a presentation, which is the thing that she said she did in that bullet point above, you know, and it helps make me real to people, not just an online profile, not just a resume, but like a real candidate in person. So I think seeing your, your face like works for you most of the time. You're not allowed to put it on your resume. Um, in the US, it's not a thing that we do. We, um, because of like possible discrimination, but I don't think it hurts you um, when you can have it like linked to or, or other profiles that you've shown. And you're right, it will be on your GitHub and your LinkedIn probably. Um, you don't need to... You don't need to indicate that a project is an academic project. Um, an academic project doesn't really normally work for you. A side project or a personal project does if it was something that you did completely on your own. So if you want to have a separate section for like the things that look really good, or if you call it a side project or a personal project, or like an open source contribution, those are kind of the, the things that take more time and energy and like show that you um, were like putting yourself out there. So if you have one of those, I would indicate it either in a separate section or like parentheses beside it, I would try to call it out. Um, otherwise I would not call out like this was a code path project or this was an academic project. Um, I would just kind of like not say that part. Um, If your only experience has been as a student assistant researcher, I think that's fine. That's good. That's good experience. Um, what if you have technical experience but not programming related? Put it down. Put down what you have. Um, it tells some sort of story, like make it a part of your story. Say maybe while you were in that experience, you got exposed to coding and knew that you wanted to go in more of a coding direction. Um, do not, good, good question. Do not mention that a job is full-time or part-time. On your LinkedIn, you can do that too. It really doesn't matter. It's like, what, part-time is still 30 hours a week, technically, right? Um, if it was a contract or temporary position and it was like for a set number of months, like let's say it was a three-month project, you might want to put that it was contract so that they know it's not like you started the job and then left after three months. Um, I love being a CS content creator on YouTube. Um, it doesn't matter if you haven't made any money doing it, it's experience. And I think it would look really cool, especially if your YouTube looks cool and legit. Um, but, or you could just link to your YouTube at the top. If you wanna save space, you could just link to that channel. Um, for experience, Using the term experience can cover kind of volunteer experience, paid experience, leadership experience, whatever. Um, work experience to me implies that it's paid experience. So when I say work experience, I try to make it paid. Although like if you just haven't been paid yet because you haven't made money yet, like you could put that under work experience if you want, but just own and like control what those headings are called to make sure that everything in that category um, goes along with it. If you have experience in a certain area, um, okay, if your internship experience is in like full stack, um, 
but you want to go into mobile. Obviously, emphasize the mobile skills. So like if you don't put, I recommend not putting dates. I'm going to share my screen again. Okay. I recommend not putting dates beside projects. Um, some people put dates beside projects. I don't think it's that important. And I would want you ideally to be able to order these projects in, in terms of most relevant to least relevant. Um, so I would love to see, like put your mobile projects up here um, in your skills section. Like maybe you wanna highlight mobile skills first um, or call out your iOS skills. Maybe you want to, um, in an additional education section, maybe you highlight your code path iOS course here. It's just about making those things then more visible if you're trying to highlight certain skills. Um, and maybe you only do that for mobile positions and you have like, you don't work as hard to emphasize it when you're applying to lots of things. Um, I'm gonna do a quick skim of these questions. And I do want to emphasize that for VCF, yes, you will want to have your cameras on for VCF. Um, so, and if you have any questions, um, I'm going to try to do a quick Loom video for you all about setting up your space, um, obviously blurring your background if you need to. Um, so you can get prepared for that. Um, okay. What does the checklist mean by no objective? Have you all seen a resume objective before? It's like kind of old school. Some people may still recommend for you to do it. Um, it is, is like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like there, there's an objective statement at the top that is like, I am applying for, I want a, an internship as a software engineer for summer 2023. That's like what it says. Um, and obviously if you're applying like in our portal, you're going to select that. So you don't need to take up the space for an objective. It's not a must to have a web portfolio. If you have one, then put it down. If it is a not great one. So like if it, some, you all are not designers, right? If it is a portfolio that you're like slowly building and like, you haven't like done the styling on it yet. And it look, just looks kind of clunky but honestly, all of your projects are still amazing. I would not put the clunky portfolio on there um, because I would just send them to your GitHub readme um, so they can see your GitHub projects. And let me actually show um, a GitHub with pinned projects. GitHub, my GitHub does not. Have pinned projects. I'm trying to find a former student of mine. This is a former student of mine. So you'll see that he has six pinned projects. Um, he has lots, he loves emojis, which is why I love his profile. Um, but you can just send someone to your profile and they can see your projects up here. Portfolio is just like another way of showcasing that. Um, you have objectives as single bullet points under your projects. That's the objective of the project, so that's fine. Um, but I would just make sure that you're using that space well. Um, am I gonna do a live review? I'm gonna try to. So <laughs> objective, hire me. That would be funny. Um, okay, let me... Okay, the whole thing about waiting for VCF to send in your application or your resume. You don't know if you're going to get matched with that company during BCF. For most companies, I would say apply to them now if their applications are open and you have a good resume. Um, for some of them, they will have a special link that you can use. And then I would ask the recruiter, I would say, I was so excited about this that I applied before. Am I also able to apply now using this link? This is honestly what I would do. Another thing that you could do is directly reach out to these recruiters and ask them because I did ask MathWorks this as well. And MathWorks said, like, MathWorks said, we want you to apply when you're ready to accept, basically. Um, and they're more worried about students not knowing who they are before they apply. So they said, we'd rather, we'd rather have students wait until they've like seen us, been to the info session, like know something about us. 
and then they can use that information to apply directly. But that's MathWorks and it's a little bit different. MathWorks is like, please don't apply to us thinking, not knowing what we do or not knowing what software we build, right? Um, and so it's helpful for people to know who they are before they apply. If you know who they are right now and you know that Natick is cool or whatever, like it doesn't hurt you to apply now. It's just going to, like you may then want to think about, do I actually want to then prioritize matching with them during, during VCF? And this is just like, honestly, this is like a little too much strategy to get into. I would try to simplify it for yourself and and just if you have the energy in a good application now, apply. And if you don't, then wait. Um, okay. If you had to follow tutorials for your side projects, as long as you added something additional onto it, I would say that's a side project. Um, but when you're doing projects that have tutorials, do try to do something that's a little like above and beyond. Um, and it's fine if you don't have personal projects yet. You all are like still in school. This is this, these are stretch goals. Um, in the Loom video that I send out, I'm going to try to tell you all to how to take advantage of VCF. My biggest, biggest advice for VCF is be professional. Um, so show up with your camera on like you're showing up for an interview um, because it is an interview and to like make the most of whatever opportunity you are given. I mean, probably my top piece of advice is to um, Google these companies before you apply for them. If you come to meet with a company that we've matched you with through the portal, and one of your questions at the end of your interview or conversation with them is like, what do you all do? Or where are you? Or like things that you could have found out from their website, that makes me cringe a little bit. And so I don't want that for you. And if you know who they are and why you would want to work for them, that instantly makes you like top 10% of candidates. So that's my biggest um, feedback right now. Okay. Um, if internships have optional cover letters, should we write them? That's also another good question. I say in my cover letter guide that only submit a cover letter if it is required or if you are motivated to. Um, honestly, I don't think I'm, I think I'm not best at interviews. I get really nervous. Um, I forget my name, forget fun facts about myself, all of that. So I like cover letters because I am better at communicating through writing and I'm less nervous and I can write a cover letter quickly. This is the exact same format that I would use for a cover letter. Um, Something in here that explains, I, that tells the company I know who you are and this is why I'm applying. Um, and bullet points with a quick story. Honestly, like these are things that you can reuse. Um, you, but you want like, okay, like if math works, likes problem solving and teamwork and people who are mission driven. I'm like, hey, math works. I heard about you from my career coach at CodePath who said that I should look into you. And when I found out that you built MATLAB or whatever, I was so excited to apply because I've been using this software since freshman year of college, whatever. Um, I talked to an alum who works there and I couldn't be more excited to submit my application. Here's a quick highlight of what I can bring. I'm good at solving problems. Here's an example of a time I solved a problem. I'm good at working on teams. Here's an example of that. I'm mission driven and know that you all care about social impact. Like, I could write this cover letter in 15 minutes. If you're going to spend an hour like obsessing over like a cover letter and not submitting your application, I would rather you just submit your application because you never really know if someone is going to read your cover letter. Although at smaller or mid-sized companies, um, they tend to do that. However, if this is basically a bad cover letter is worse than no co cover letter at all. I could have just said that. Um, Yes, the cover letter guide. Okay, does anyone want their, to share their resume with the time that we have left? And I'm going to... <laughs> um, Emil, because I think I've seen Kevin's and Sam's before, but um, if you want to share your link. And I'm going to turn off the recording if I can. Stop sharing. Uh, yeah. 
just letting you know, I, I, I have updated it since uh, I think I sent it to you a while ago. <laughs> um, but 